I'm going to just take a few minutes to give you a real short history of, of the library. Our library was started 100 years ago, and it's occupied five different locations, including this one. And if we had delayed this opening for just about a week till October the 1st, it would be exactly 100 years ago that our library was started. That's how close we came to this. On May the 12th of 1915, organizers from the UDC, a women's club, met at the home of Miss Marbury to get the library started. Now, you're all probably wondering, UDC, UDC, is that the Federated Women's Club? No, it's the Confederated Women's Club. UDC stands for United Daughters of the Confederacy. And they got together at Mrs. Marbury's house and got organized, and they wanted a library. And if you'll think back, this is about the time that Andrew Carnegie was roaming around the countryside, and that's how they got the library started. I was going to ask Karen, we have any of those 126 books left? I don't know. That'd be an interesting thing to know. Yeah. Well, on October the 1st, they got the books together, and on October the 1st, they occupied a spare room in the high school building at the time, and that's how the library got going on October 1st of 1915, and the high school was the building over next to Truman that was torn down recently, that old school building, okay? And that's where the library started in 1915, but within about a year, the UDC ladies decided that that was too inconvenient, it was too far from town. <laughs> and so they moved it to the Tetley building in 1916. And the Tetley building's still here, it's just down the street, from, just down from Ozarks Federal. Well, in 19, let me find my spot here, in 1920, it moved over to a room in Farmer's Bank, and Farmer's Bank is gone now. It's the you know, parking lot for, United, or for uh, uh, First Bank right across from the courthouse. It's just a parking lot location now. And in 1924, they moved out of that location and moved into the newly constructed Long Memorial Hall. And by that time, they needed two rooms, so the library had grown some from those original 126 volumes. They stayed in 1924, they stayed there from 1924 until 1980, when the building behind City Hall, which we refer to now as the old library building, was completed. And they moved in there. In August of that year, that's when they moved into the former uh, uh, library. So here we are. Our library is in its second century of service, and we're going to start it right here in this, this beautiful building. John Keats wrote that a thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass away. And this beauty, beauty, building in all of its beauty and the joy it brings to us when we come in and the way that it lifts your spirits is a perfect metaphor, a, a, a perfect picture of the service and the caring and the dedication and the hope that our library has provided down through the years. It is warm and inviting and it's filled with promise. It's a tool for living and a gateway to a better life. It is an investment in our people, both those who are here and those who are yet to come. It is a statement of who we are and of what we value. It is perhaps the best evidence that we can offer for our collective wisdom. And so for all of you, both here and away, and those who are listening on the radio, who have worked for our library, cared for our library, supported our library. Your efforts have led directly to this moment. So on behalf of the people of Farmington, I want to thank you for your service and for your dedication. It was not in vain. And now let me introduce my friend, Dr. Bill Miller, pastor of First Baptist Church right across the street to lead us in the